Lalande 21185 is the brightest red dwarf in the Northern Hemisphere. With an apparent magnitude of 7.5, it's only just too faint to be seen with the unaided eye. At approximately 8.31 light years, it is one of the nearest stars to the solar system, and only the Alpha Centauri system, Barnard star, Wolf 359, and the brown dwarf pairings of Lumen 16 and Wise 0855 are known to be closer. Hi everyone, Vega here, and in today's video we continue our exoplanet series with a look at the neighbourhood star that is literally streaming towards our solar system. So, let's get to it. Lelande 21185 has a radial velocity of minus 85.6 km a second. The minus means it is coming towards our solar system. In approximately 19,900 years, the star will lie just 4.65 light years from the Sun, just over half its present distance. What this means is it is likely that it will be one of the very first systems that we as a species are likely to visit, if not even the first one of all. In May 1857, when Friedrich Argelander discovered the high proper motion of the star, it was sometimes called Argelander's second star. The first Argelander star was a fellow local red dwarf, this time Groombridge 1830. Lalande 21185 is a typical main sequence M dwarf, with about 39% the mass of the Sun, and it's much cooler than the Sun too at 3500 Kelvin. Like most red dwarfs, it emits most of its energy in the infrared. Indeed, Lalande 21185 was first thought of to be typical of a red dwarf, and indeed a flare star. However, many observations since it was initially catalogued have shown that it is actually rather quiet in comparison to other stars of its type. This suddenly makes the system very interesting indeed, as the current closest star, another red dwarf Proxima Centauri, is without question a highly volatile flare star, and this might mean that those two factors combined, that Lalande 21185 is fast approaching our solar system, and that it's relatively stable for a red dwarf, may indeed push it above Proxima in the suitability stakes for habitation and exploration. Of course, 19,900 years seems a long way, but when it comes to human evolution, it may be exactly the right amount of time required. Indeed, Lalande will at that point be the closest star to the Sun other than the Alpha Centauri system. So, anyway, what about its planets? Well, this is where it could get even more interesting. Data published in 2017 from the Keck Observatory supported the existence of a close-in planet with an orbital period of around 13 days. Named Lalande b, the planet is thought to have a mass of around exactly three Earths. Unfortunately though, it is slightly too close to the star, and so therefore is probably too hot to be in the habitable zone, although its average temperature is estimated to be around 370 Kelvin or 96 degrees Celsius, which does leave it a little bit of leeway, perhaps around the poles for more reasonable temperatures. As always, much would depend on the atmosphere that surrounded the world, and as a super-Earth, it does have the potential for a thick, heat-trapping atmosphere, and this likely would rule it out for habitation. But of course, this is all speculation and remains to be seen. The star itself is a relatively powerful red dwarf star compared to Proxima Centauri, or indeed Leuton's star, and its designation of M25 means it's not too far from becoming a K dwarf, a bit like Alpha Centauri b, and so its habitable zone extends a bit further out than normally might be expected. We see here that the habitable zone of Lalande 21185 would start at around 0.11 astronomical units and stretch out towards 0.24 or even perhaps as far as 0.3 astronomical units. For reference, Mercury orbits the Sun at 0.4 astronomical units, so if it were transferred into this system, it would indeed be a very cold world. A second planet on a much further out orbit, aforementioned Lalande 21185c, is another confirmed planet in 2021, and it's thought to have a mass of about 14 times the Earth. So in this case, we're talking about roughly a Neptune-sized world, slightly smaller, that orbits the star at a distance of 2.85 astronomical units, or similar to the orbit of around Ceres in our own solar system. Although every planet has its own merits, of course, this one doesn't seem to spike the interest enormously, though, because even if it had many moons, which gas giants and ice giants tend to do, it's likely none would experience reasonable temperatures, and probably much like the frozen Saturnian moons of Titan, Iapetus, Rhea and company. So, what's the excitement about Vega, you're probably asking? Well, hang on a minute, because there is a third planet, Lalande 21185d, is yet unconfirmed, and hence its slightly strange designation of D, because it's expected to orbit between the planets B and C, and has a period of 215 days. It has an estimated mass of around 4 Earth masses, 
So again we're talking about a super earth, outside of the habitable zone, but this time only by a touch. And of course habitable zones are of course only a guide to where liquid water might be found, given reasonable atmospheric or earth-like conditions. Indeed, if we look at a definition of habitable zone, it says, the habitable zone is the area around a star where it is not too hot and not too cold for liquid water to exist on the surface of surrounding planets. It's not out of the question that liquid water could exist on the surface of this world, perhaps in direct sunlight on the equator, if such a world had a thick, heat-maintaining atmosphere. There are so many variables that can indeed infect where the water could flow. I think we can rule out La de C, as it is really way outside, but as things stand, B and the potential world D are just outside the habitable zone, but only by a whisker. Indeed, if we could somehow grab Venus from our own solar system and push it out past the orbit of Mars, for example, it would likely retain its heat and high temperatures. Likewise, our moon is directly in the middle of the sun's habitable zone, but its lack of atmosphere means violently varying temperatures between day and night, and even then, water just sublimates, as there is insufficient pressure to maintain it in liquid form. Likewise Mars, water does not flow for this very same reason, sublimation rather than flowing water. It is also thought that undetected low mass worlds, perhaps similar to Earth, may also be orbiting Lalandi 21185, but this time within the borders of the habitable zone as well. But this as yet remains speculation. Lalandi 21185 is a red dwarf star that lies very close to our solar system and is sprinting towards us. It is thought to be a relative stable star compared to other red dwarfs in our vicinity. It has two confirmed planets, a frozen ice giant and a warm inner super-Earth that is probably just out the range of habitability. A third planet also lies just over the edge, but this time possibly a very cold snowy world that may in some parts harbour warmer valleys where water could flow. In 19,900 years the system will literally be our next door neighbour. We wonder where our technology will be by then, and whether or not we will be able to take advantage of this strange, yet enticing red dwarf system. Thanks for watching and consider subscribing if you haven't already. If you would like to support the channel further, you could consider buying me a coffee and I'll link this in the description below. Thanks to those of you who have already done so. If you'd like to see videos or subjects brought to life, don't forget to let me know in the comments below and perhaps next week your idea may show up. Take good care of yourself and look after your friends and family well. I'll see you on the next one.